Really? Mm-hmm. Insurance badge. I'd like to welcome everybody to the Webmasters meeting. Now we actually are broadcasting out to those. There's about 10 people sitting out there somewhere, maybe in Nebraska, maybe not. Um, today, <laughs> we're going to talk about uh, captioning videos. That's where we're going to start. We'll see how that conversation goes. And this is our wonderful presenter, <laughs> Jenna Marsh, right? Yes. Okay. Correct. And let me fix this for you. That's out of your way, and you can do what you need. All right. Well, um, since this whole conversation got started around captioning, that's where we're starting. Um, I wouldn't by any means call myself an expert in this field um, with the captioning, but uh, we ATP, we've been um, captioning our videos probably since 08, 09, somewhere around there. Um, it's, it's not a lot. What we primarily use it for is success stories. Um, ours are, you know, three to five minutes long, and um, it's one of those things where I'll get some work done, some uh, video made, and then, you know, sit down and edit it, and I'll get like three done, and, you know, I, I get to do the captioning and figure out how to piece all that together, and then, you know, I don't do it for quite a while, and so it's like each time I feel like I'm relearning. But um, I wanted to share with you the, the tools that we use, and then um, maybe kind of clarify some of the things that I thought were quite confusing about captioning, and I didn't really understand right away. So, um, first of all, I guess, um, because this conversation kind of started around the fact that, and, and I know this is pretty common, dealing, um, working with accessibility, and when I used to present on that, you know, I get a lot of phone calls and stuff about how, well, I have to do this, you know, and not really understanding the rules or regulations, or sometimes you're just, you're getting a comment thrown out there from somebody else, you know, but they don't really understand why or what those rules or regulations are. So I was just going to start by um, kind of, I really simplified it here with this, this chart here. On one side, there's a Rehabilitation Act. On the other side, the Americans with Disability Act. Um, and as you see, if you go down here, this is kind of what I described in my response to that email I sent out to the group. Um, but the Rehabilitation Act is a civil rights law protecting the rights of persons with disabilities. It's governed by the U.S. Department of Education. Now, that's a little different than the Americans with Disabilities Act. You can see it's also a civil rights law protecting the rights of persons with disabilities, but it's enforced by the U.S. Department of Justice. So there's kind of those, you know, different plays and words there. It's governed by the U.S. Department of Education, and then with Americans with Disabilities Act, it's enforced. Um, you know, we've got all these wonderful guidelines and things that we should do, um, but is someone, you know, going to be there to slap us on the wrist? Probably not. Um, I, I just want to clarify that so people understand that. Um, and um, I kind of, you can see it comes into, where it comes into play specifically with websites, captioning, different things like that, is a lot of lawsuits are filed under the ADA. Um, I have just a couple of examples listed out there, but um, Ramada, Priceline, um, Amazon, Southwest Airlines, and Target. Um, for some reason, I had thought not too long ago, I could have sworn I had seen something come across my desk or I stumbled upon something where they had said they had kind of established that, um, you know, there was a case that had set precedent that just basically said that these laws applied to the Internet as well. Because, I mean, it, you know, it really started off with your bricks and mortar and then it advanced on to, you know, other things. Um, but I, I thought there was. And, you know, I went and looked it up, Googled it, whatever, and for the life of me, couldn't find anything. So, um Kind of, you know, the last the last big case was Target, um, and you know, I, as far as I understand, because I couldn't find any, any information about this other case that I thought there was existed. Um, you know, they're really they're kind of still waiting for those lawsuits and a precedent to be set that says it really does apply to the internet and that internet is a public space. So that's still pretty out in the open. Um, and as far as I know, um, most of these end up in settlements, you know, before they really go anywhere. Most there are some in the Department of Education. I know Penn State was involved yep. in one. Um, some of the big, like the, the Bar Association, some of the testing entities that do a lot sure. of high stakes testing, they're involved in them. Sure. Yep. And education is whole nother beast, I think, of itself, but yeah. Um, so basically, I mean, these laws, 
um, the Rehabilitation Act, it applies to federal government agencies, those that receive those federal funds, which I assume most of us here today that we're working in organizations that receive federal funds. Um, it was originally intended to pre prevent discrimination in employment, including hiring, promotion, training, compensation, social activities, and others. Um, it talks a little bit about Section 504, extends coverage um, to education, employment, health care, welfare, kind of touches on a lot of different social service type stuff. Um, 508 is really specifically towards websites and your um, electronic information and technology. Um, so that's, that's really just to kind of show you the difference there. Um, and also then when you get down to the state level, we have the Nebraska Technology Access Clause um, and created by the Nebraska Information Technology Commission. And basically those guidelines, they're modeled after Section 508. So the same, the Rehabilitation Act. So that's that. Um, I guess, you know, when to use captioning, um, moving on. And, you know, I guess th this applies to internal and external. You know, you should be using it for, you know, public, like things that are going to go out into the public public realm and then also for employees as well. Um, things that I would maybe consider, because um, I know everyone kind of has unique situations of what types of videos they're producing or, or you know, they're storing or putting out there. Um, but um, I would kind of consider the length of the videos, you know, how often are these being viewed? Are, viewed? are you putting them out in the public domain? Um, those are all types of different things, you know, to consider because um, though there are some <clears throat> relatively inexpensive services out there, it can get very pricey. And, you know, you'd hate to sit there and spend hundreds of dollars on, you know, say like a staff training or something like that to be captioned when it's more likely they're not just going to sit there for years. You know, should the need arise, sure, you know how to make it accessible, you know, but in the, for the time being, you know, um, it's sitting there not being used and you've spent that money on it. So just some things to consider. Um, obviously, if they're short and you're putting them out there in the public, especially the stuff that we do, you know, they should be, they need to be captioned. Um, I know s some part of the discussion, too, we talked a little bit about trans, trans, trans can't speak, <laughs> transcripts, you know, versus captioning. And, and, you know, it's, 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 um, it's comparable, it's accessible, it's, yeah, it's kind of up to you guys, you know. Um, the service I'm going to show you, um, by no means I'm trying to promote this, I just want to show you what we use. Um, you know, there's the option to get transcripts or you can get, you know, obviously if you want captioning and you don't have transcripts, you're paying for that transcript anyway. Um, so, because they need that to create the captions. So, um, speaking of that, I'll go ahead, um, the service is called um, automatic sync technologies and I'm just going to go to their website here. Jana, I'd like to just mention something that any of the websites that Jana's going to go to and any of the handouts that she, you know, the PDF she brings up and the other documents, there when I send out the um, recorded, then you'll have links to all these things. Okay? So you don't have to write down all the URLs and that kind of stuff. Thank you. Should have mentioned that earlier. Sorry. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, no, thank you. To this pop up. Um, let's see. Let's see. Mm -hmm. let's see if I can get to the right spot. Um, I don't think this is where I want to be. I wanted to just kind of show you um, the input formats and the output format. So how to get the files that you need. Um, and maybe if I go to captions and subtitles. I basically log in here and I tell them what I want and I don't really, <laughs> I don't really play around on their website too much. So I apologize that I obviously can't find what I want to show you. Um, I thought this would be easier than logging in, but maybe not. Um, okay, here we go. So upload content in many different formats, video and audio format. So when you have a video, this is just going to show you all the different extensions and file formats that it will that it will take. Um, so you can see you got flash video, QuickTime video, um, your 
MPEG-4s, um, iTunes, iTunes Audio, but I mean there's there's quite a few here. Windows Media Player, Real Player. Um, now, um, then when you're then if you choose to submit your stuff and get captions, you get output formats. Now this is something I didn't quite understand when I first started this, but um, all of your captions um, they're unique to the player. So if you're going to be playing this in iTunes, you have to have captions for iTunes. If you're going to play, be playing this in Windows Media Player, you have to have a file that plays specifically to Windows Media Player. Um, so when you go, you have the option. It costs no extra if you want one file output or 20 file outputs. Um, but that's just, that's just food for thought. Um, you know, where I'm at, we play mostly everything on QuickTime. And so... Um, what I did is, usually when I um, upload a video, I request QuickTime. I also request Windows. I've never done anything with them yet, but I have them in case I need them. And then also um, the SRT, which is YouTube, because YouTube has its own captioning as well, since they're all player specific. Um, now, one of the nice things, I'm, I don't quote me, but I do know there's, once you um, submit, something through the through automatic sync technologies I believe you have six months and say all of a sudden you realize you need it for another player but you didn't you know the same video or, or captioning file um, say you have it in QuickTime but you need it for Windows and you didn't request Windows at the time you have six months and you can request that and that's not an additional cost or anything like that they'll send that to you so that's what's that's really nice and it, they do have really really quick turnaround times so that's just one of the things I wanted to show you there. Um, one of the other nice things about this is they have on here um, a resource called um, how to like their how to tutorials. So um, if you get a file back, it's going to show you. I can't access my <laughs> scroll bar. Um, it's going to show you how you can connect the two so they talk and they they work together. Because um, that that's another step is once you get the files, okay, well, how do you how do you link it to your video so that it works? Um, let's see, I think it's under resources. So you can come down here. And what's really nice is they have these all in videos, actually. They're all captioned. You can go in here, and it just it walks you through the step. So how do I, I get my QuickTime file. How do I connect that to my video? And um, anytime, I've, I've had really quick responses, too. Like I said, I didn't understand a lot of this. I had no clue, like, that the, the captions were, you know, unique to the players. And when I first started this, I called them. And I got, I mean, I got emails in minutes. I got, you know, a call. I got a person on the line, easy to talk to. You know, I know some services, it's, you know, it's one of the sometimes good things to look at is that you're going to have, you know, you've got someone to work with you. And they'll point you, you know, they'll point you to the how-tos and stuff like that. They're not really support, like call us and walk you through it. But they, they put this stuff together for the purposes of, you know, selling their captioning and selling their service. So um, it's, it's been a really good service for ATP anyway. Um, I did just, if anyone, out of curiosity, I, um, I asked for a current um, pricing. And it was kind of funny because I knew I could get a response from this, this guy uh, that I was kind of my contact there. And I emailed him and I said, I'm going to go talk. I just want to know what your current pricing is because it's like we order this stuff, but I don't, you know, continue to check, you know, I assume it's the same. But anyway, I know it's changed since the last sheet I've gotten. And so... It was pretty funny because he says, well, you know, if you log in, you could just get it yourself. <laughs> but he sent it to me and, it, you know, it was great, you know, so I didn't have to go looking for it. Because like I said, I pretty much log in to submit my files, get my captions, and that's about it. I don't really, you know, play around on the website too much. So this is government pricing. Um, their immediate turnaround is $1.48 per minute. Um, and like I said, we have, um, ATP has about... Our videos are three to five minutes long, so we're paying anywhere from ten, fifteen dollars usually for for a video. So, um, yes, their standard is three day turnaround, um, and you can see there it breaks it down into you can get the transcription only, you can get the captioning and the transcription. Um, I'm, the product transcriptions. Um, 
I don't know that I've ever differentiated between the two, but I'm assuming with it being time stamp, that's that's getting into you know your time codes and stuff like that. So that's something we're I, we pay for that. That's something that I don't want to sit there and time things. <laughs> I don't know how to code that. But um, anyway, so um, that's that. Um, does anyone? I mean, does anyone else have videos or services or things that they're using right now? Specifically for captioning. Yeah, for captioning. Yeah. Um, I'm just curious about Google had their beta test on their captioning, and I thought it worked pretty well, and then it went away. I don't, I don't know if anybody else had any experience with that. Mm -hmm. I actually. Ran. And you use that for just any videos? Uh, yeah, or? I would upload a video uh -huh. to YouTube. We would actually do the transcript ourselves. Okay. And then I would upload a transcript. But it wasn't time stamped. It was simply text. Right. Uh -huh. And their, this beta software that they had would um, match it to the boys. Wow. And so it would, and it worked great. And then all of a sudden it was gone. And they decided. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know, maybe somebody huh. bought it now that they sold it or something. Probably because that is a pay service. And it might, but I used it quite a bit. And just, I don't know. Where were you putting your videos and when you done on YouTube? On YouTube. Uh -huh. So, yeah, it, so you were getting... Was upload, a, upload a text file with it and oh, five sure. minutes later you have a transcript on, on the video. And then that's what you can you uploaded to YouTube then? Yeah, it, it just took it. Um, it just synced it right there. You upload the video first, and then you upload the transcript with it. And oh, okay. Five minutes later, okay. it's done. And then you can embed the code right. You don't have to embed anything. I mean, or the the YouTube. The, right. Yeah. The YouTube. Yeah, the YouTube link or or After it's been, embed and now code. It's gone. And now it's gone. Exactly. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the YouTube part yeah. of Google that might be right. one of the reasons I went to everybody's on that. Yeah. 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 That's what we're asking about out there. That's <laughs> well, one of my questions was, um, does the Office of the CIO or Nebraska.gov have any resources for helping agencies deal with this? Since I came late into the room. <laughs> <laughs> captioning. Uh, for the captioning um, of videos, um, we have done um, a couple um, um, looking at tools um, uh, to do captioning. Um, and I think we've done a couple, one or two for images. But that's about it. Sure. Um, well, I did, I brought with me, if anyone's curious here, um, oh, did I not want to do that? Let's see. You brought with you, oh. Oh, just the, the examples of the transcripts that we get back. Oh, um. um so to my desktop. Yeah. <laughs> this should be really easy, right? Mm -hmm. So when you minimize it was not no longer there, correct? No, it was just a blue screen. Okay, let me see if I can find it. Okay, so if we're here, and if I do this, will it show me? I don't, I'm not saying it will. Does she have to go? There you go. Okay. Um, so I brought with me two different examples. One is just a transcript like we were talking about that has no time-coded information and the other one has a time-coded information. Um, one of them um, I edited and the other one I did not. One of the things that we do have to do when we get this back, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty accurate. Um, and one of the things you can do also is you can enter proper um, nouns and names and things like that so that way um, if you have things that you're talking about or you know terms that come up a lot that maybe you don't think they're going to catch you can just spell that stuff out and it comes back correct um, let's see this transcript here um, this is just the just a second, oh because, um, 
Do we and lose the people? People out there can't see what you're looking at. Oh, okay. So, so what, can we open them both up and put them down on the yeah. uh, toolbar? And then I'm going to go figure out yeah. why it says on there. Okay, so if I don't show the desktop, well, this would make sense. I absolutely don't want to do that. Screen sharing. Are you no longer? Oh, it's paused. So. Do you see it now? Yep. Okay. Good to go. Okay. Okay. So let's see. I actually want to start. It doesn't really matter, I suppose. Um, but this first one here is just um, the transcript. This is just what's being said. Um, and if you go down here, this, this particular, I only brought this as an example because this particular gentleman um, doesn't have the best English, and so <laughs> it's pretty broken. And so you go down there and see if I can even find a good example because um, it's pretty broken. But, you know, he was talking about, like, he, he's um, a tailor, and so he sews. And it, it's just kind of interesting, like, you, you start, you just kind of quickly scan it, and you can pick out words that, you know, make no sense. Um, but, you know, I was there, and I, I knew what was said, and so I can, I can just go in there and change that. This, I'm not actually doing anything. We don't do anything with the transcripts. So that's why this is unedited, and I haven't done anything with it. But if I was going to post this as my, my alternative solution instead of captions, I would want to make sure I go in there and change that. Um, that's kind of the one thing, you know, when you go and you get all these files back, <laughs> then it's all those files you got to go through and make sure, you know, you're changing them. Um, but the time codes, and these are, these all look very different based on what type of file they are. Um, that's just how they're coded, you know, how they kind of break apart the times and things like that. So this just gives you an example. You can see all the, the time breakdowns here. And it's just something I go through. And I'm, you know, maybe like five words or something at the most I usually change. Um, it's usually like one or two. I, you know, you get some people that, especially with ours, we're interviewing consumers and you get people that, you know, don't enunciate or they don't talk really loud or there are certain times they'll get quiet and that's kind of where it drops that. But um, other than that, we've had really good um, luck and success with this. So that's really all I have. Was there any questions or anything else you guys wanted to talk about? Do you, you mentioned training. You need to training for employees as far as captioning. Do you need to, or should you caption things that are internal or intranet for the employees? Is um, that, does the law refer to that for videos that are posted internally? You know, I I always say it's good practice. Whoops, it's good practice to to do it for both. But what what I would really look at is how often is it getting used? How long is it? Um, just because it, it is, it, it gets pricey, and you know, it's it's quite honestly, it's kind of confusing. <laughs> I, you know, it's it's not the easiest thing to work around. And yes, we want things to be accessible. At the same time, we have to look at, okay, well, quite honestly, you know, we have these trainings sitting here, but do we have anyone accessing it? So no. The law the the law the law really what it does for us is provides us. Wanted, um, just guidelines, you know, on how to make that stuff accessible. So. Which you had mentioned that this public captioning is confusing. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. But, but right. Do you know what the requirements are, or are we all pretty much guessing? Or does the OCIO know what the requirements are? Um, they follow the Section 508 guidelines. Um, do we have links to the I? It's not very, I quite, yeah, I quite honestly don't usually ever just go to the section where they have posted the Section 508 guidelines. I usually go to WebAIM and look at their resources because they lay stuff out a lot nicer and a lot more user-friendly. Um, but there's, um, we can see if we can go there. And, and, and that's going to get into more than just captioning. Captioning is like, you know, probably one guideline on there. Um, so you wanted to go to the 508 guidelines, is that what you, think, yeah. Or what you said? Yeah, and I'll search, I can search, at, or I can look at WebAIM too. And WebAIM um, is Web Accessibility in Mind. Oh, okay. It's an organization in Utah that's really great. They do they a lot of training. A, they have a, like a monthly newsletter. They have all kinds of stuff. 
Um, so here's their Section 508 checklist. I mean, these are all the same. This is, you know, they're just taking this and they're laying it out in a format that's a little bit, I think, easier to, to look through and read. Um, but you see the standard is over there on the left. You got your A, a text equivalent for every non-text element shall be provided. Um, and, then, and then what's nice is it gives you an idea, okay, what passes, what fails. So you're not just given the guideline. And then this this just continues to go down. Yes. Can you scroll down to captioning? What's that? Can you scroll down to captioning? Um, let's see. It would be I'm not sure which rule it is. Here, here, this B here, equivalent alternatives for any multimedia presentation shall be synchronized with the presentation. Video files and live audio broadcasts have synchronized captions. Um, content presented through video but not through audio is provided in an audio description track. Um, so and then you can do description that. track the transcript? Um, audio description, well, <laughs> just what description gets into, if I can, I can show you um, an example here. Um, this just made me think with our own videos where I could make it just a little bit better. Um, let's see. Um, description, what that, you see this is, this is at the beginning of a video where it's going to start. And, it, and it, put in the, it put in the captioning background noise. Now technically what that is, there's a, there's a doorbell ringing because there's someone entering this guy's business. So I could go in there in that trans, you know, that captioning file and put in their doorbell ringing. So that description is getting those things that are either that, that you're seeing or hearing that aren't, you know, they're not, no one's saying doorbell's ringing now, so that's not being captioned or, you know, the same with like um, a consumer is walking, you know, into the, I mean, it's, it's the stuff that um, visually is being conveyed or auditorially that's, happening but it's not being conveyed through the text is what that's catching, that description is catching. So that's kind of included in that file. Because we have we have descriptive videos upstairs that we have for uh, our company for Braille so the client. And you know you're um, you we watch it's the same video you would watch, but then when it, when they're quiet in the background the guy's saying, so he's taking her hand on her back, so they're gonna do a waltz or he'll say he had just hit the button to send the rocket, whatever, and then that the auditor would stop, and then you hear the people talking again. So if all you could do is hear, you should be able to get this. I'm not saying the same, but a very similar experience in watching the movie that the people who can see but can't hear. And so they can, you know. Right. Anyway. Right. Yeah, it's kind of bringing those um, visual, some auditory stuff too, um, so that it's. You're basically understanding that message altogether. Um, so that's a step more sophisticated than I'm talking about. They only it, be read transcripts. Right, right, yeah. It's it's adding, but you know, and those are just things. I don't know if if like you guys have videos you're you're having to share. If you're you're kind of in the development of those videos as well. Those are just some things to kind of think about when if you are developing those. You know that whatever is happening, you're basically talking about, and then that takes care of that description. You know, you're you're making sure that it's being said. Um, you know, because it's kind of like the whole images too and alt text you know quite frankly a lot of what we see is fluff I mean it's great and wonderful but is it conveying a meaning not necessarily you know so it's just making sure that if there's something that's important to that message you know you're, you, it's being said as well as you know for those that can see it so yeah in the past we have put a video online um, and provided as a separate link right next to it, a transcript of that video. Is that now um, wrong, or should we add in that transcript to the um, to the video itself? Some, some time? I think I think it's perfectly acceptable to have a transcript. And then, if you have a transcript, if you have the money, you go ahead and try to caption that transcript into the video. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's why I just say a lot of it, I think I would base on your situation, you know, what types of videos are you are you using or 
uh, and or creating and how long are they. I mean, all that stuff comes into play. And the thing is, is if you know about it and you know there's resources and you can do it, um, it doesn't mean you can't you can't get it done. If, if you know, let people know that you know if there's something that's not captioned and they'd like to see it captioned, you know, let us know. We can get you know we can get it accessible for you um, because if it sits there, you know, for two years plus and it's not going to get used, you know, it's hard to justify spending the money on that stuff. I mean, if it's if it's three to five minutes, okay, yeah, let's caption it, let's let's get it done, it's there, that way if people need it, great. But if you're talking about 30 minutes, an hour, and it's, it's not going to probably get watched, you know, I think it's just, it's, it's good to know your resources and know if someone does have that need, you can provide it for them. Well, and that's, um, so you have a video on your website, and it's 20 minutes long, you've never captioned it, but as long as you have a link at the bottom of your whatever page they're on, and there will be any page they're on on the website, but there's one at the bottom that they can contact people, then they can say, hey, this looks interesting, can I, you know, can I get it captured, can I get it, get a transcript mm -hmm. of it, mm -hmm. or whatever. And then, yeah. And, and that might be part of, too, where you draw the line with the transcript and captioning as well. You know, if you've got the time and you know how to, you want to do your own transcripts and can do that, and you, and you don't, you know, you don't have a ton of 20-minute videos or whatever, you know, go ahead and, you know, do the transcript. You know, maybe that's kind of where you draw the line between the transcript and caption files. I, it's, it's all kind of individual, and I just think, I mean, is it important that this stuff is accessible? Yes, you know, definitely, especially if we're putting it out there in the public domain, and especially if we have employees that need that stuff, too. Um, but I do know, I also know that a lot of times stuff gets made, and it, it's, it's not being seen by anyone that would need it accessible either. So I, it's just, yeah? What resources are there available to turn a, an audio uh, voice into Um, you can use the automatic sync technologies. They, they provide just transcripts, um, and will take the, the audio or, you know, video files. I, I really, I don't want to sound like I'm promoting them as in, you know, their services or anything like that, but that's really all I'm familiar with. Um, it was just one of those things, um, you know, with being, uh, working with people with disabilities, and we obviously, like, you know, we're part of a national organization as well, you know, um, this is what other states have been using, and it was kind of, you know, brought up to our attention. We looked at it, you know, the pricing was great. Like I said, they're, they're really good about responding. Um, you know, if things are confusing, they're going to respond to you. Because um, I, I honestly don't think it is the easiest thing. And like I said, every time I go to do it, I feel like I'm, I mean, I understand it, but I always feel like, okay, how did I do that? You know, i got to go back to the videos or just kind of play around with it and, you just send your video any transcript or anything? Yes, that was my question. Is that what? How else do you get a transcript besides using the service? Are there other ways to turn video into text into a text document? Oh, that's fine. Do you have to have the blind things or can you just post a PDF document? You can just post a PDF document. The time stuff is just actually for to <laughs> synchronize with Synchron. the video. So if you're not putting it directly with the video, you don't need the timing information in it. But uh, in the PDF you read, I thought that was more interpreted as a picture versus text. Um, it just depends on how you're creating it. If you're actually developing your, before you create your PDF, if you're doing a Word document and you're typing all that out, then that will be accessible once it's a PDF. It's, you know, it's the, yeah. right, or something like that where it's, it, it's within an image that it's not going to be. The um, PDFs, if you make them with Acrobat, it should OCR. Right, I've had. Um, I, not necessarily. Well, you, you have to tell it to do it. Yeah, I was going to ask that question. Because um, I get a ton of PDFs. And um, sometimes they'll come to me that way. They're just scans. And I will then go ahead and use the OCR feature. Have you had much luck with it? Um, <laughs> It seems to be fine. I mean, I haven't had like major major issues. And Adobe I, Reader, if, if your scans Adobe Reader will not OCR, they have to be done in Acrobat 10 
you know, the, the program as opposed to the reader. Yeah, you can't do it in a reader. I use right, the right. Pro you and out the OCR just, my experience is I usually, I've gotten, I get all the text, but then I get a lot of numbers thrown in there and just a bunch of gobbledygook I don't need. And so I usually, what people want me to hasn't been so, you know, long and cumbersome that it's just easier for me to retype it, honestly. Um, but yeah, I've, I've, that's kind of been my experience with it. I'm not, I'm not a huge Acrobat fan, I'm Adobe fan, so but I'm kind of... <laughs> I'm kind of stuck with it. <laughs> well, we got, it, it was kind of ridiculous for a while because all of a sudden throughout our agency, we got all these um, copy machines that had scanning capability. Oh, Next yeah, we did know, too. Boom, That's I'm just getting yeah. documents mm -hmm. like crazy yeah, PDFs okay. sent to me that were scanned. Mm -hmm. And so then I started just doing that OCR thing in info. Yeah, and that's great. I mean, great if it works. And it could just be <laughs> The, the couple documents Boy, I've had. So. <laughs> oh, sure. Well, it also depend on like if they typed up a Word document, which, okay, this is just silly. If they type up a Word document, take it to your scanner, <laughs> the copier, and it scans it and sends it to them, and then they send it to you. Now it is a PDF for you to use. But it originally started off as a Word document. So that might be easier to take to your OCR program, the, part, the Adobe part of, for the OCR. But like... We have uh, a gentleman, a lady upstairs, who has to scan old um, Nebraska documents from, you know, we're talking 1800 or so. Mm -hmm. Now this stuff has got not very good paper to begin with, mm -hmm. and it's tiny tight, and she scans it, but then she also spends hours, and it, the program goes through and tells her that shouldn't be a three in the middle of the word, duh, that shouldn't be a seven in the middle of the word, whatever, and so she mm -hmm. has to correct it, you know. But you don't want to type an 80-page but everything you just scanned, you right. want to, you know, it is easier to go through sure. that way. Sure. The, when you use uh, a Word document and create a PDF, you just never scan it. You print it directly to a PDF. Right. Uh, uh, and I agree. But I'm just saying, and, depending on who's doing it. Yeah, one example is we'll get letters, like, uh, from the feds that are um, compliance letters or something like that for some of our facilities and things like that. And, They'll have a signature on it, and signature is not really an important thing. It's just we just get a paper letter in the mail, you know. So there's not an electronic document, so those will get scanned, and then I OCR those. And those need to be scanned because it has the official right. header on the top, and you know, so they know it's an official document from whoever it needs to be. Yeah, we got the copiers now, the scanner thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's great for my home stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but our copier is older, and it does not do the old the OCR. Canon, I guess, has one coming out that will do the OCR. I was kind of curious how many people use YouTube for their video hosting. We do. The commission does for some more stuff on the outside world. Um, Jenna, do we want to play? Yeah, does, do you want to see an example of a mm -hmm. caption yeah, video? Question or? From someone sitting out there. Okay, yeah. Okay. We can, we can we, watch it. First, we have to unmute you and turn your volume up. You can do that, right? This little button oh. down there. Okay. So just go to that little, or I can do it. You can do it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Yeah. There we go. The key. <laughs> okay, go away. Come on. Okay, why are you not doing what I want you to do? There we go. There you go. I was doing the wrong button. Now, uh, you might get way too much noise. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> go like that really quick. Now let me put the. In order for them to hear out there in yeah, whatever land, we have to use this. So. 
you can start your play. Hello, lady. How, How are, are you? you? How are you? How can I help you today? I have some meals, lady. All right. This is a fitting room. Why don't you help yourself? Okay. Let me know when you're ready. Okay. My name is Saino. Oh, I know how to sew when I was 11. And uh, okay, when I came I over this my country, <laughs> I do uh, uh, a lot That's of different kinds of job, but finally I think sewing is my passion. So I decided to go back to work and I'll go back to work to open the shop. It's a long way, but I made it. The accident happened. I'm <laughs> so sorry to say that. Over five years ago, and it happened on my birthday. I'm so sad. It's still emotion a little bit. Emotional a little bit. Uh, I climb up the ladder to fix the gun when I go down. And this is not the first time. This is, you can call, hundred times. Go up and down the ladder, no problem. And this time is ladder flip. And when the ladder flip, it hit at the back of my my back hit the rail at the neck, so it broke the T4, T5, and in five seconds, I don't know how many times my body rolled it, but when I land on the ground, I could not move my leg, so I know this is no fun, this is not bruise and cut or sprain or something you can easily overcome in a couple of days or whatever. It's a long journey, long painful journey. And I like to say that I don't want anybody to go through what I go through. Okay. Uh, first, I, I um, know Nancy through uh, the guy named Bob. He is uh, who uh, installed the chairlift for my uh, house, you know, the chairlift can help you go from the first floor to the second floor. And during the conversation, he said, I know the lady named Nancy, she have a, she know the special sewing machine can help you. And I say, I raise my mind, I say, how she, she have a special machine for the uh, handicapped people. I know, but I just have that in my mind. And one day I decided to contact her to see how she have a special machine. And I called her and Nancy showed up. Of course, Nancy doesn't know yeah, the sewing so machine, it's a special yeah, machine. Good idea. But she said um, she have a resource. As I'm saying you're watching this, I'm just kind of thinking, you know, I haven't played around well, with it was a... And I don't, um, just, you know, with how those are appearing on here. Um, with my QuickTime files, I, I have because I keep it so there's a black background behind those at all times. And then that, that text is easier to read. So um, just sitting here looking at this, I, you know, I don't know how much flexibility there is within YouTube itself um, as far as, you know, um, changing that. But that, that's what I was thinking as I was watching that. I don't know how hard it was to kind of read. And I, I did notice at times, too, um, that some of my little um, titles there and names that were coming up, you know, we're crossing over those captioning. So those are, those are once you get your files and you start putting them together, all the other things you get to see and think about and, and deal with, so. And this one's actually posted on your site. Yeah, this, we have a, a YouTube site, so this is the ATP's. Oh, this is the ATP's YouTube site. Yes. Um, yes. And uh, questions that I have out there, um, he asked about, um, is there any way, to, and this is something Greg mentioned earlier, is there any way if you put videos up on YouTube that you can get them captioned? And Greg had mentioned that YouTube used to have a way to do that, mm -hmm. but it has gone by the wayside, evidently. I can't seem to find it. <laughs> <laughs> so the captioning would be some, like you said, the, the um, automatic sync technology. So it's just, you, know, you have to. I mean, you have to find a way to either produce it yourself or, or generate that through a service, and then you can upload that. It's it's an SRT file. It's .SRT. Okay, so then, and we also talked about having a transcriptionist either in your office or out there someplace having it set up for you. But then how do you combine the two together? Now, your company does it for you. 
I, I do that, yes. Oh, you do it I yourself. Do it. So mm -hmm. what do you use to combine the words and the video? <laughs> that, that's why, um, whether you use this automatic sync technologies or not, it is really a great place to go and look at the how-to tutorials because it will show you, okay, if you have, you know, as an example, I use QuickTime, so I'll, I'll use QuickTime as my example. If I have my QuickTime file, um, how, how do I make it connect with the, with the video? So there's a way that you can embed it. Um, and then that file lives by itself, or um, that's probably the best way to do it. Because otherwise, you know, you have to have your video file with your your transcript, and then you you hit your your tran or your captioning file, and then they'll they'll recognize each other and play. But as long as it's embedded, you go and pass that file on to somebody, it's going to stay with it. So. And what do you use to embed it? Um, I actually I use um, QuickTime Pro Seven. Oh, you do it right in QuickTime? Yeah, you open the, you actually just, you take the captioning file and, you know, right click whatever on it and I say open with the QuickTime Pro 7 and then basically you're copy and pasting it and then you're you're opening your video in that in QuickTime Pro 7 as well so you and then you're dumping it into it, yeah. Okay, and exactly. then, yeah, no, and then there's a place where you go into preferences and you just make sure that it's lining up with the size of your video. There's a place you can go in there and dictate if you want it to be on the top, the bottom. Some of that comes into play when you when you order the captions too, because they'll kind of default they'll default that stuff for you if you have an you know know how big your your video is, like the size of the screen, and then you know if you want it at the bottom or wherever. So, but why did you pick QuickTime over um, the iTunes format or? Uh, the iTunes? I don't know a lot of other formats. So because when you, <laughs> quite honestly, when you double click on the video, that's what it opens in okay. on my computer. So, <laughs> so kind of um, well, yeah, we use Macs, and so that's I mean that's kind oh. of our. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, and that and that's kind of why I always got the Windows Media Player. But you know, not everyone, not necessarily everyone that I work with, even has Windows Media Player downloaded. But it was just another alternative if people use. Are primarily Windows users, so. QuickTime is a higher resolution video um, format. All the other sort of compressed like, versions of, well, not versions necessarily of QuickTime, but QuickTime is probably a better place to start with video creation. Um, that and um, what's the other format I'm trying to think? One other, but anyway, it's, it's, it's a higher resolution video format. It's kind of the starting place, and then the other formats are more compressed from there. Comes down to. Uh, at what point do you change the, the type size for type space or put a uh, black, uh, a little bit of black behind it to do some contrast? Or is that uh, a lot of light on the screen itself on the video? At what or point in out the out process do you do that? that? Um, once I have the files, um, well, when I'm in QuickTime Pro, there's like a preferences or, you know, there's a menu there and it gives you a window and it, it'll ask you, it'll ask you that type of stuff. So did you learn that QuickTime on your own or did you? Did no. You tutorials in QuickTime? I, I, um, I found that through the how-to videos on the automatic sync technologies. Oh. So they are very quick, very helpful. They are, they are. I, you know, they, they'll, they have the resources there because they provide the service and they want you to be able to, to use it. And so if there's something, there's a certain, like I said, I, I didn't even understand that when you're getting these files that it's, it's specific to the player. So if you, if you have a specific player, you're not able to find it, they, they are really good to, to work with. Um, you probably don't even have to tell them you use their services and they, <laughs> they probably, you know, as long as they can point you in the right direction, I mean, they're pretty... They've been pretty helpful. So, does anybody? Okay, so we talked about uh, who hosts on YouTube and the Library Commission does, and a couple other people raise their hands. Do, do people host on their actual websites themselves as opposed to hosting it on YouTube? Okay. And does anybody have experience? Do you, Greg, you talked about doing some closed captioning already, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is your experience different than what Jenna has talked about? Um, no, it's been generally the same. We're fortunate enough to have someone um, that can do the 
transcription for us. So mm -hmm. I send her a video and she does the transcription or else I just um, pull the script and use that and edit it a little bit so it, so it makes sense. And I use, again, simply upload the video and then upload the transcript and YouTube would then sync them. It was really cool. <laughs> 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 There is a <laughs> there was a while where just captions in general wouldn't work on YouTube. Um, yeah, I want to say a year ago, maybe six months, eight months, something like that. Because I remember going to check out some of my videos and I'm going, this is just great. You know, I upload these caption files and, and it won't play them. So it, it was, I don't know how, it didn't last too long, but I know they were having issues just even playing like the ones that you uploaded. So... I don't know. You must not have the support to keep it going. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm trying to think of other questions, but and and we've been answering. We have a few people online, and they've been throwing out some questions. The one we didn't answer, oh, it's gone now. So I'll see if I click the right thing. Um, tell them to put it back up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you. Well, I've been texting him back saying, now, did I do this right? Or is this, this, are you still there? Or did you, did you get mad because you're not answering? Um, and you said that if you're going to caption something like a webinar, you have to have cards. Is that my correct understanding? It, the, can you say that again? If you're going to caption a webinar, a webinar, yeah. um, you have to have what did you say? You have to have a card. You have to have a cart, an interpreter live doing the closed caption on the fly. Oh, so like like on the news, they have someone back there typing, and all you know, once in a while you just laugh because you're. Like, if I'm off yeah, or through a or through a now. service. Right. The only ones, I'm, I can't even think of the name of one, but like you can, you join in and then, you know, you get your, um, as it's happening, you get your feed on your computer, like you have to connect via, and then have an online connection. Well, they're, through the service, they're doing that for oh, you, and then it's, and then it's popping up on your screen. So like if you needed the captions and you wanted to join the webinar. I can't remember what that's called, though. We, I, I did a little quite a while looking into um, captioning because we just added our, well, over a year we've had our um, video conference um, equipment that we use. And, um, of course, it is not accessible. <laughs> um, and so that's kind of been a challenge because it's it, the services we found are very expensive and we haven't really, and quite honestly, it's people are used to the interpreter, so it's almost easier to have the interpreters there. But then at the same time, you know, you have the delay with the video, and so that gets very awkward, and, and it's like, well, does interpreter need to be on the side where the person needs them, at the site the person, you know, it can, needs the interpretation, or do they need to be, like, at a remote side, or I, it gets kind of messy. But, um, you know, you can buy your own encoder and decoder, and but, I, yeah. I guess it would depend That's on what you're, what you're putting out. Um, the question, he did text it back, so... Um, Anthony was saying the 508 guideline you showed seemed to say we are required to provide synchronized captions, not just transcripts. Are you saying that it's not a requirement? Because we kind of mentioned um, that if we had a transcript right next to the video, that that would be good enough instead of having them combined. And that's in our opinion. That's in <laughs> our opinion. Um, I, you kind of, it, it's, when it comes to accessibility, it's accessible. It's an alternative and accessible. Um, I'm trying to think of the way that I've heard it described before, but, you know, um, when English is your second language, you know, or things like, it, it's obviously, it's a heck of a lot easier and convenient for a user to sit there and have the caption, you know, the captioning provided on the screen. Um, so they can watch the video, they can see that all happening at the same time. But, um, they get the same information from a transcript, you know. So it, it it's kind of, it's based on your individual preferences and what it's being used for. 
with your audience. What, what, can, what can you do? I mean, if you have someone on staff that can provide you with those transcripts and they're getting paid to help you do that, do it. But, you know, if, it, if you just can't get it captioned, I mean, that's okay. I mean, you, the thing is, is to know where the resources are and if you need it, you, you can deal with it at that time. Um, it's it's just it's all about preference and I I mean it is the right thing and we want this stuff to be accessible to everybody but um, I, I just really think it's silly when people I'll, that's that's when I get calls somebody said I have to do this or you know I'm gonna get in trouble or oh my gosh you know I'm it, it just like I have to do it and then they like these light bulbs go off and they're scared and it's just like you know we do the best that we we do the best that we can and yes we should make this stuff accessible um, but a lot of that is going to be to pay is going to be dependent on our situation and, and what we can do and and like I said what is this stuff being used for too you know how long is it all those types of things to consider nobody's gonna come find you and track you down <laughs> I, <laughs> you might get an unhappy consumer you know and that's how you're gonna find out about it. of course we want it accessible to them you know so if they can read a transcript great you know um, and if they can't read a transcript, there's programs that will read it for them in the background as they're watching the video. I mean, there's, I mean, if the person, and I hope I'm not going to say this wrong, if a person has a disability that prevents them from reading it, then there are programs that will read it for them. And, then, and if they have their own computer, they probably already have it. If a person has a disability that they can't see, I did that wrong, didn't I? That they can't hear, then they, they can see the transcript on there. They can see the video, they can see the transcript. And a lot of people have two monitors nowadays, so they can, you know, have them both up and going. Well, and you think of an individual that can't read, it's going to be, I mean, it's going to be the same thing. It's a transcript or a captioning. I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. I, the whole point is that the information is available and they can get to it. Yeah, and that's the, that's the idea with the the um, the captioning as well because it is it's it is a transcript. It just has the timing information in it as well. But the transcripts, you're right. A reader can read them later. Right. You know, if I needed them read later. Right. If you were in the middle of you know. Janet, I'm gonna have to right. run upstairs, but that's okay. okay. If you can keep everyone moving, then. I think we're kind of, we're kind of wrapping I, it up. I, so. I, I, unless yeah. somebody else has something else, I think we're done. And 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 uh, uh, you want to take your stuff? Oh yeah, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> you know, it's because we haven't had the meeting for over a year, and I'm so out of sync. <laughs> you're, you're welcome to go do that, and you don't have to come back if you want to. The only thing I wanted to mention to people was, if you want me to stay your chair. My idea is we don't meet unless you pick a time. <laughs> I, <gasps> items for agenda. Oh, agenda items. Awesome. Okay. Oh, double items for discussion later. Oh, for today. Okay. 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 Well, I'm just going to go plug my meter. Okay. okay. Uh, and um, we are still going to keep right for the for the, those that are out there. In the cybersphere, we're going to we're going to, to have a couple other discussions because we're done with the the uh, captioning discussion, but we have a couple other things we're going to talk about. So just ignore the fact that the 508 is up on the on the screen. So. I can put it here and it should capture your voice. Okay, that would work too. Tried to contact you over the phone. Yeah, um, I know. I'm, yeah, no, that's I fine. tried to avoid it. It's, uh, <laughs> and I know every time I show up, everybody's like, okay, here we go. <laughs> No, but um, uh, my name is Brent Hoffman. I'm general manager with Nebraska.gov. Um, and instead of sending out an email, since you guys were having a meeting this week, um, I thought I'd just appear in person and then follow up with the email. Um, but what we are uh, we are going through a website redesign, um, and uh, you guys have probably already heard some wind of this. We've been trying to communicate. Um, um, from the top down um, and so we've taken a little bit different approach to this um, there's three aspects that you guys will need to know 
um, as webmasters. Um, number one is the all services list and the all agencies list will stay the same, will not change, and the bookmark will remain the same. What we don't want to do is affect the productivity of the state. And we learned from 2008, you guys heavily use <laughs> that bookmark for those two things specifically. Okay? Um, that being said, the site will change visually. Okay? Um, but those two things will remain the same, and they will be put up in a position up by the search bar. Okay? Number two is... Um, we are pioneering, <laughs> that's a good word, no. <laughs> actually what we're doing is um, we feel like that um, what the state does um, uh, electronically well um, and we as webmasters and Nebraskans as a whole is we're helpful. Customer support, customer service and those types of things. Um, and so in that, um, in that same vein, what we're doing is um, we will be launching sometime in May, okay, that is Firefox enhanced only. If you are using any other browser than Firefox, you will not know we launched. 80% of our users are using Internet Explorer, okay. The majority of state employees are using Internet Explorer you should not see a change immediately. You may get people that say, hey, I'm on Nebraska.gov, and they're telling you a different link, you know, they're describing a site that's different than what you're looking at, okay? Um, those users will have the option to switch to the current site as it looks today. Does that make sense? So in order for you guys to continue to do your jobs well and effectively, you can ask the user to press the link to switch over to the same site you are looking at so that you guys don't have to change and you guys can provide the same level of customer support that you're used to. Helpful? Make sense? Okay. How do you know you're in the Firefox enhanced because only Firefox will be directed to that site. Okay. Safari browsers on your phone, um, Opera, all those other little ones, Internet Explorer primarily, will stay on the current site as it is today. As a matter of fact, you will be hard pressed to, there are ways for you to get to the new site, okay, but um, you would have to do workarounds to actually get there, okay. Um, it will not inherently go there. Um, so all your Firefox users, um, probably, I'm, what I'm going to say is before May 8th, okay? Anytime after May 8th is probably when we are going to launch. Um, and like I said, our goal is not to affect you guys. Um, you guys may be using Firefox at home. You can get accustomed to it over the next two, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks. I do not have an actual launch date for the site to go live for both sites. Reason why is what we're doing is we're doing expanded, uh, what is called is A-B testing. We're the first state to ever do it. Um, and so what we're doing is all these Firefox users, we will be tracking how many of those Firefox users click to go to the current site. As we tweak and find out reasons why, they will have the opportunity to provide optional feedback. Um, when they switch over. You know, I don't like it, I'm confused, I didn't find, blah, 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 and we will try to find out, try to dial in exactly what the problem was. Once we have more Firefox users choosing not to switch over to the new site, to us that is about 50,000 user tested acceptance uh, I kind of said that backwards, but it's user acceptance for about 50,000 people in a month. Okay? So we would feel much more confident then, okay, as we communicate to you guys, all right, we are a week out. <laughs> okay? This is what the launch is going to be so that you know that we didn't go, surprise, your jobs just changed. Does that make sense? 
over time, what we will do is we will continue to use the Firefox Enhanced site to launch new items. So that again, your Internet Explorer experience, um, primarily at the state, is not affected until a large group of users, about 8% of all people that use Nebraska.gov use Firefox. Until those users tell us, hey, we like that, will we publish it to the new site? So that you guys are confident that it's been tested, it's been, it wasn't just thrown out there on a whim, um, and anything that, most of those changes will not affect, you know, what you guys are doing. Because, like I said, I know what you guys are doing is going, okay, um, let me see, that service is here, 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 click, 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 click. You can probably even close your eyes and do it and tell somebody without even going to the website, okay? Any type of those type of activities, we will tell you ahead of time before we launch it over to Internet Explorer, especially if it's something that, you know, some critical piece that we move. Does that make sense? So our goal is, instead of every three to five years going, ta-da, in three to five years, our site could look totally different and redesigned without you guys even realizing we did a redesign. Yes? I know you're doing a new site for us, so pretty short for you. Drupal, are you also using Drupal? Mm -hmm. We are not or using Drupal. You're not using Drupal for this one. We are not using Drupal for this one. Um, uh, just because um, we have to start from scratch to be that innovative. Okay. Does that help? Does that make sense? Is there any questions on that? Um, you guys can, um, we're actually doing something else, um, which is probably why my blood pressure is about up <laughs> 10 times. Um, uh, the state of Nebraska is on Twitter, at Nebraska.gov, or as, at Nebraska.gov. We have also set up as, um, we're Nebraska Interactive, we have also set up an NE411, okay? Uh, if you're familiar with hashtags, we've created design NEGov as a hashtag. The, the, the general public, we have general public, we have um, young professional organizations, and we have um, state employee samplings that are testing the site um, that's protected currently but we've asked them to use the hashtag Twitter to provide us of their feedback and comments so that you guys know exactly what we're being told people like or don't like so that we can be more open in communication um, so that as you guys see changes, you guys know that we're listening to what other people are saying. Okay? My blood pressure's up because it's the social world. I don't control it. Some are snarky, some are not. <laughs> um, and so uh, we'll see how it goes. But, you know, that to me, again, that says what, what we all do best as webmasters is we're there to support people. This is exactly what we're talking about with, you know, with the videos and the captioning. We want people to access the site. We want them to enjoy it. We want people to look at Nebraska and go, man, you know, that's a cool state, and they were really helpful. That's what we want them to walk away with. And so that's why we think it's important to do our rollouts and convey that same um, communication um, outwardly. So that's the big news. I do have, I have a, a procedural question that I, that, that I asked and that I was brought back to this group for. Um, one of the elements of our design is called responsive design, which means um, if anybody has ever viewed our current site on a phone or a tablet, it goes into a straight column, okay? In our current redesign, what we've done is we've used responsive design. So as you guys scroll, you will see elements being removed and taken down so that if you're on a phone, it looks like a phone. If it's on a tablet, it looks like a tablet. If it's on your, if it's on, you know, your laptop, you know, you get the high resolution. If you're on this big, I mean, we can make it as big as we want to. As we go down, can we still lie? As we yeah. go down, oh man, I'm trying to 
trying to use two fingers for my mouth. The official banner is taking up space. And I would like to be exempt since we're the since we are Nebraska.gov. <laughs> I am requesting an, an exemption for the for the official state website of the state of Nebraska to not have to carry that banner. And I can get a waiver, but it has to come from this group. Do we have any questions about what he's asking? Because I'm sure all the rest of us have that at the top of our website. I'll be sure yes, that. I did that a year ago. At Earl Moore, right there. Yeah. 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 And, it, and it makes sense what you're saying. You are the rest of that, though. Okay. Right. Was that from the Office of it initially it started here, yeah. but it had to go yeah. to the NIPC for them to make an official um, guideline. Oh, okay. So the suggestions that start here, so they, they have to make waiver. And you're talking about getting waiver from the NIPC. Is that are you getting right. waiver from us? The 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 recommendation would come from you. The waiver would come from the NICT, or Got the it. exception would come from the NITC. And we can expedite that. <laughs> Um, we can expedite that, but I, we need to we need to we need to start here. And I didn't know if that was too controversial, or because I think where it came from is is we have a lot of we have uh, several um, URLs that were created. The you know big thing was to create your own URL, um, and there were .coms, but yet they were official. Like treasurer.com was the state treasurer of Nebraska, and since it wasn't a gov. You had to have the banner to make sure that everybody knew that that was a, an official state website. And so, um, like I said, there are still purposes for that official state website. Mm -hmm. But I'm, like I said, for yeah, it was, design it was purposes. About cohesive, it was about a cohesive um, branding for all state websites. And where it came from was the, um, we scored really low on the Brown survey one year. Mm -hmm. And that was one of our efforts to try to improve that. Yeah. Um, and with that, one of the other things I heard was that if you know we wanted to step up and bring some kind of a branding and some kind of, like we have certain things that people need to have at the bottom so that they wouldn't say all our websites have to look the same. We're all going to be this color and have this banner right. and have this thing. You know, right. we were trying to make them get compromised. Yep. Exactly. You know, which is any and I think what we've seen over the past four or five years is people incorporate the swoosh branding um, somewhere in their website and their in their redesign. Um, you know, they don't necessarily use Nebraska, but you know, branding is not about the name; it's about you know the swoosh or the design where you go, oh, well, that's Nebraska. And I think we've done a really good job over the past four or five years of um, in a lot of the redesigns in, in incorporating that branding. Um, but I don't. I don't think that we should. We should totally get rid of it. Um, you know, from uh, you know, as a whole. But I would like the exception for the for the state portal. Okay. So my question would be, and I'm not very formal. So, well, you know that my question would be first. Does anyone have a problem with us voting on this in this room now? There is no number of, actually this is probably the largest group we've had for a while. So, um, this is it. No. no. It just you know, shows up. And um, so the online. Oh, okay. And um, Anthony is asking what the specific question is. And um, <clears throat> again, um, your, your reason uh, just for for my clarification. Our reason is is that with the responsive design, okay, it scales as you go smaller. Right. And so as you hit the iPad, the banner takes up more space, right? And so as you get down to the phone, it even takes up more space that where we could have, you know, we have the feature and the, the citizen and business and all of that type of stuff. And it makes our it makes things a little clunky just to have official website. Yes. It's, a de it's a defined pixel. Right. right. So you're not talking about removing it from your home page as you do on, you know, on a large computer. You're talking about removing it from just your handheld device. 
I would like I would like to remove it totally, but that I would be open to keeping it on the the computer and being able to remove it to scale it down. That's a that's a good suggestion. That would, that would be that would be a compromise that I'm I'm willing to. Yeah, yep. and I think it's a topic we should probably look at addressing future wise because we're all going you're all going to run into this problem you know so like I said it, you know um, you know um, you know if, if need be we can we can do it on the website and take it off as we scale down and then have this as a topic of discussion of what can we do because like you said it's a fixed pixel and when you're talking about a mobile phone every pixel counts <laughs> every pixel counts so um, and unfortunately when we did this whole branding thing the whole thought about seeing it on your phone was sure. probably not part of our wasn't as much a part of our conversation sure, no. i do remember people <laughs> yeah like we're gonna have this it. on our phones yeah but yeah. it wasn't like <laughs> a lot of, okay so yeah. the um we have a compromise and um so i don't know the formalities other than i think we probably need some type of vote or official consensus so that I can get back and, sure. and take care of whatever waiver thing we need to take care of to say yes that's fine and then we'll, we can open it to, to discussion because like I said we're all going to run into this. Okay so I'm going to start with this. We're going to vote on whether we can offer Nebraska.gov an option for the top banner. So all in favor of voting on an option. Did that make sense? I, I see some questions. Questions. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, maybe if this is a kind of a sensitive issue and I think you know we're not in this room. May, is there a possibility to do an email? Because we have some voting rights of who emails to a very professional organization and it's okay. Um it works. Is that is that an option that people want to look at or I don't it doesn't matter to me. My opinion is the people who actually care or would talk to us in the first place are probably here. here right. It's just an extra step. And, it's fine to say. and then do I give it a week, do I give it two weeks? I mean, when, uh, right. not that I don't think that's valid. You know, I'm voting sorry. online, getting people's opinion, I think is great. But I think we're kind of in a, a um, and this, is it because I haven't had a webmaster's meeting? We're so um, <laughs> no, on a no, no, schedule No, no, no. As a matter of fact, it's it, this. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, my first question is: Do we have any problem with voting on whether we're going to give them an option or not? Does that make sense? Okay. So, is uh, who are in favor of giving them an option on the banner? Raise your hand. I think that passes. Okay, so now we have um, two different options to give them. Option number one is for them to take the banner off of all the Nebraska.gov website views, whether it's on the computer, the tablet, the phone, whatever people use. Mm -hmm. That's option one. Option number two is let them take the banner off of every view for Nebraska.gov. So those are the two options. Did that make sense? I, I think it is Did option right? number one. Option number one is to completely remove it from the Nebraska.gov homepage, uh, home pages. And number t option number two is to remove it from every view of Nebraska.gov with the exception of um, the computer browser. The computer browser. Yeah. Right. That makes more sense. So the um, option number one is to remove everything. it from all views. Option number two is remove it from all views with the exception yeah. of a computer. See that made more sense. Did you get that part? No. Interpreters. We were talking about that earlier. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Mm 
by all means. Mm -hmm. For instance, we still have a few irritating Nebraska webmasters who we pulled out and say don't put anything up there and the conclusion comes as good. And so this one might say, well, they don't do it. They don't do it. Why should I? Okay. The other one is that we've already given some designers the, the ability to opt out and not put the line underneath the uh, well, on, and on our view, it's the dark black line, dark okay? Dark black line, which takes up more space. Right. So they, you know, we've already given them that, so that would at least be another option to get some of the concerns about them. If they can get rid of that line, which takes up many more pixels. And that might be an option that if they hadn't thought about it before, maybe that would be something I need to address back out to the webmasters to let them know, you know, the ones that haven't. And I know at one time, and I don't know, she's not here this time. One of our uh, one of our members went through and looked at all the web pages and said, these are okay, these aren't. And 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 I I I agree with you on um, you know removing it from the computer web page. Um, I think shows, you know, if we keep it up and on there, option number two, mm -hmm. then that does show that to you know, to to an extent, to a large extent, we're still not exempt from the rules just because of our name, and so I think um, you know, I like option number two, is I guess is what I'm saying. Where does the iPad land? Um, it lands uh, in option number two. In option number two. Yep, because it is not. It's. It, I mean, if we'd really want to get technical, it'd be a resolution size. But right. I think for these purposes, what we're saying is, is if you're anything smaller than a laptop because we've got e-readers that are hitting volume, so we yeah. can't really say tablets anymore. We have to say e-readers and phones and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I think that type of stuff is for further discussion down the road. But, I I mean, for all intents and purposes, I think option number two is probably the best option. Would it bother you with consistency, though? <laughs> Not having that consistency? Well, I, th I th think that's what he's saying. There's yeah. no consistency right now. And I think, you know, we need to be an example of showing consistency. Right. Um, and, but I think, too, I think, you know, we're going to have to address this at some time in the future, so it should probably be a, a discussion of, okay, so is there a mobile banner that looks different? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Right. You know, yeah. that type of thing. So, like I said, it's, um, but for right now, I think, you know, we're just asking for, you know, the, the option number two. So we just skip option number one, just go to option number two. <laughs> and option number two gives, um, I'm sorry, I yep. can look it keeps the It keeps the official banner on, 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 the, on the computer browser. browser. Any other view is exempt. I, I, okay, so I guess we're going to vote on that. Who likes option number two? Okay, so we're going to vote on option number two. Now I got Anthony out here. Um, just give me a second. I guess one of my questions is how many options, and this sounds expensive and stuff, but can you pick more than one option? Well, I think, that, again, I think that would probably be discussion more for later um, because as, as this launch is the impetus for um, you know, next generation redesigns for this progressive, or not progressive, but this um, uh, this design theory that as you scale, it goes to different platforms. So I think we might not have a choice, but look at a different option for those for those different platforms. And, um, Anthony voted for option number two also. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All opposed? So at this point, we're giving you permission Thank or you. waiver or whatever. Okay. And you'll handle it from here. It's not like I have to follow up on this. I will follow up on it. Okay. I might need some type of communication from you. Um, uh, An official the, webmaster letter? Yes, to the powers <laughs> that, that be. But, uh, I'm going to scan it. <laughs> yeah, scan it, please. 
uh, and leave the lid halfway cracked. Too. <laughs> so thank you very much, guys, and uh, we'll um, um, we'll be at the next meeting and we'll just continue to talk about this whenever that is. So thank you very much. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you for doing it. I was when I was in college, I was smart, and I had money for my resolution, and I had time to support the internet. Is it going to be more like your mobile site? And so I was like, I love it. Well, this style of design. It's mobile over here. I'm trying to comply with all that. That was the next stop recording. <laughs>